Welcome to another episode of Vision Basic. Do you know where your pets are? Okay, that was a nerd joke. Before I dive into the subject of this video, I have to say that getting these videos out on a more frequent basis is proving rather challenging. But I want to assure you that I have been working on something these past several weeks that is super important and so very worth your patience. I will keep you in suspense for the time being though. Hopefully I can shed some light on what I've been up to in my next video, so stay tuned, alright? If you subscribe to my channel right now, you'll be able to stay in the loop, okay? Due to how super busy I've been lately, I've decided that this video will be a simple tips video. Sprite tips to be more exact. Oddly, as simple as this video was intended to be, it was still a lot of work. Some of these tips will apply to regular BASIC and some will focus on sprite programming in Vision BASIC. I've always intended for this channel to cover a little bit of regular BASIC as well, so this is one of those times where it's not all about Vision BASIC. I don't have time for splashy graphics, so we're mostly going to play around with square sprites. They don't get to hang out with the cool sprites, I guess. The animation you see on screen right now is something we'll look at soon enough, but we're going to start out with something very basic. Okay, so I have a simple little sprite control program that is about as basic as it gets. I've added comments in the program to explain what's going on. And first I need to load it. Everything is pretty self-explanatory here, so I'm not going to cover all the registers being poked to. If you're completely new to this kind of stuff, you'll need to grab a copy of the Commodore 64 User's Guide. This video is a tips video and assumes a certain amount of C64 knowledge. Since we're only dealing with one sprite, the poke in line 190 keeps things simple when it comes to that most significant bit for the X position. And we're going to list 170 onward. <laughs> I messed that up. List 170 on, onward. That's hilarious. And the lines here from 220 and onward check the joystick and port 2 and alter the X and Y coordinates accordingly. Lines 250 to 280 try to keep our sprite from going out of bounds and line 290 branches back to update the sprite position registers. So let's run our little program and see what it does. Here we have a lonely little yellow box. And at the magical speed of regular basic, we can move it about. Yes, we can. I know some of you guys are, you probably wet your pants, you're like, dang on, that's awesome. But anyhow, I think uh, if this guy had a little friend, it might be a turtle. I don't know. What do you think? But anyways, uh, let's go ahead and stop it. Okay, one of these keys works. Okay, there we are. Huh. Okay, now this is slow as usual, but we can do some things to speed the program up a little. Let's make some changes. I'm going to copy some lines and put them in. As usual, it's quicker. And, oops, sorry. And I'm less likely to make mistakes. There we go. And then, I'm going to list 180 through 200. And we're going to make some changes. So, uh, let's see, up here, poke B, X and A, and poke E, uh, put A there, and poke C, Y. Okay, I suppose 
I could have just as just easily have cut and paste and put it in there but hey um, I just wanted to show you the changes so now I'm pretty sure many of you have seen this tip before you simply replace a handful of lengthy values with some variables that get defined at the start of the program the variables that get defined first are accessed the fastest so that's why we do this this tip alone makes this particular program run about 1.24 times as fast but I'm not going to run the program yet because the speed difference won't be super apparent so are we ready for more tips let's add a couple more variables to the mix and we'll paste them in and we're going to change some lines and insert them as well and press enter and we should get rid of that little uh, box there for a minute these changes speed things up more than double or even triple over the original program let's run the program first and then I'll explain the changes I've made And now our little slow friend is, he's got some caffeine, he's woke up, he's, he's awake now. Alright, so we're moving, yeah, about twice as fast, I think this way, and maybe triple this way, I don't know, I timed it. But anyways, uh, too much excitement, too much excitement, don't want anybody to faint here. Alright, there we go. And we're going to list 220 onward. Okay, if you remember, we added some variables to the start of our program in line 1 to replace the values that we used to pull the joystick port. And again, we are doing this because the variables will read faster than the 3 and 5 digit values originally in line 220. So as you can see, we now have an F and a G variable in line 220. Honestly, I don't know how often you can use this trick. But when you add enough variables to the start of your program, variable access slows down a tiny bit for each of these later variables added. And from what I understand, it's better to go with single letter variables over two letter variables when it comes to this form of optimization. But the main technique I want to teach here is optimization of the program flow. A lot of times we have code that gets executed which really doesn't need to be executed. At least it doesn't need to be executed with every pass of the interpreter. So our first step of optimization is the very first thing that happening at the start of each of the lines numbered 230 to 260. With each comparison here at the beginning the rest of the line will not get executed if the statement holds as false. So if the joystick isn't being pressed in any direction, we have four quick comparisons and we're done. Nothing else gets executed. So let's take line 230 here. We check to see if bit 4 of the joystick port is set. If the result is non-zero, then progress continues to the next part of the line. Technically, a joystick press will actually change a bit from 1 to a value of 0, but it's a common programming practice to reverse the bits as we have done in line 220 by subtracting the value peaked there from a value of 127. Okay, so if the joystick is being pressed to the left here, which the value of 4 represents, we continue on to the next comparison if the joystick press is going to push our sprite out of bounds then why even execute the rest of the line that's what the next if then comparison is for notice that we are not using an and here but rather just one if then after another if then this is another optimization because an and will force both comparisons to be made even if the first one ends up being false so we continue on here and decrement the X coordinate if the sprite isn't going to be pushed off screen in the process. The next couple pokes you see here represent yet another optimization. Typically, when it comes to poking 
In sprite coordinates, a programmer will poke the X and Y values into the appropriate registers whether a sprite is moving or not. So in lines 230 to 260, we are only poking the X value if the sprite happens to be moving horizontally, and we are only poking the Y value if the sprite happens to be moving vertically. So if the value we put into a register isn't even going to change anything, why even take the time to put it there? That's the point of this optimization. A final optimization occurs at the end of line 230, a simple go-to. If the joystick is being pressed to the left, why even check to see if it's being pressed to the right? In the very next line, am I right? It is important to note that the sprite will move a little faster when moving up and down because there is only a single poke involved and there are no calculations going on for the Y coordinate either. Notice that in line 270, we actually don't jump all the way back to line 180. We simply don't need to anymore. We're only poking the sprite registers when necessary. And that's really the biggest tip of them all. You can apply this tip to basic programs, assembly language programs, and vision basic programs as well. And there are probably some basic program tips that you can glean from other sources that you won't see in this video. Basic is notoriously slow, so if speed is important to you, jot down every tip you can find. Okay, so we can actually make this faster, believe it or not. I'm going to paste in some lines and, I'm, and I'll explain what I've done to the program. And here we go. Okay, let's, let's uh, get rid of that sprite again. And scroll down to get rid of this. Make it easier for you to read what's going on here. These lines help us to bypass that first if-then comparison at the start of each of the lines we saw earlier, numbered 230 to 260. I have bulked up the code a bit, but the results will still be faster. You will find that faster code will sometimes appear bulkier. For example, you could fill the entire text screen with a single character using a for next loop and a single poke command, or you could bypass the loop altogether and simply issue a thousand individual poke commands. Which do you think will be faster? So here I've added line 222 and instead of testing all those bits of the joystick we're just going to jump to the different lines below based on the values returned by reading the joystick port. We are either going to see a single bit affected or a combination of two bits but never more than two unless you have a strange joystick. Now another possibility with that would be if the joystick button is pressed. So, uh, so for this example don't press that joystick button. You'll notice the uh, double commas in line 222 and basic will see a zero between them and simply jump to the start of the program if the joystick returns goofy combinations like left and right being pressed at the same time for example. You could put a line number in there but this actually runs faster this way. It took some logic to figure out the lines that follow. See there are four diagonal possibilities so I had to figure out how to make sure each diagonal diagonal joystick press landed on a line where both X and Y get poked into the sprite registers. So just follow me here. If the joystick is pressed up, we jump to line 230, where we make sure the sprite doesn't extend too far upward, and we poke in our Y coordinate. Branching then goes back to 220. If the joystick is pressed down, we jump to line 240. Same thing happens, except that the movement is down. A single poke is issued. If the joystick is pressed left, we jump to line 250. Same thing, except that the movement is left. A couple pokes are issued, and we jump back to line 220. But here's where it gets interesting. If up and left are pressed, we jump to line 228. Notice how the X and Y values are both affected. Line 230 gets executed just like it does for the case when only up is pressed. What I had to figure out is how to handle all situations where diagonal movement is chosen. Both the X and Y values get affected in these cases. Now, I could have set up line sets for each of the eight possible directions, 
but this would result in four more lines than what you see here. I wanted to consolidate a little. So what I'm doing here is this. When up, down, left, and right are selected, the jump goes to lines 230, 240, 250, and 260, and only a single coordinate is affected, X or Y. But when diagonal moves are made, the jump goes to the lines before each of these lines, where the extra lines of 228, 238, 248, and 258 affect the additional coordinates involved. So, X and Y are both affected in each of these cases. There are seemingly four redundant lines added to the mix because each line appears twice in the code. So you might be inclined to think that we could just go sub to two different lines for each diagonal movement and go back to having just the four lines of 230, 240, 250, and 260. But this redundancy here is the faster of the two options. So if you want better speed, sometimes you just need to add the extra lines and be okay with it. Anyhow, these changes speed things up about three to six times faster than our original program, so let's run it, eh? And here we go. Yay. I think our uh, little turtle friend here, this guy as slow as turtle, he's, he's had that extra cup of joe. He's moving quicker now. Alright, and I didn't really demonstrate the uh, border thing here, but uh, yeah, we're uh, going to bump up against these borders to show you that they work too, because I failed to show you that earlier. Come on, come on, you can do it. Get over there. I'm tired. Okay, speed up. <laughs> no. uh, there you go. Okay. My little friend is he's getting a little angry here because he's like, quit telling me what to do. Alright. Escape. Okay, let's get rid of that guy. Now I created a basic aid for this video that you can use to position sprites with that will make positioning easier and faster. I'll demonstrate how to use this aid by changing some lines in the program. And again, I'll just paste them in there. Hello. So here we are moving the first couple lines down and inserting a load for the machine language code that will help us out. This code can be found in the D64 image I'll link you to in the video description. I may not provide the link immediately, so check back in a few days after I upload the video. I've eliminated variables A, B, and E because we don't need them anymore. They, they'll just slow everything down since they're not needed and I'm introducing a variable H which points to the machine language routine that will help us set our X coordinate for our sprite. The machine language code contains several entry points and each entry point is provided to cater to a different scenario giving you the most efficient routine for each circumstance. I'll try to provide a text file to explain each entry point and pair that up with the disk image. Let's replace the rest of the lines that we need to replace though. So, let's paste those in. Okay. And now we're going to list 180 onward. Now, we don't need to replace any of the pokes for the Y coordinates because you are not going to see any speed increase if we replace the pokes with SYS calls. The reason for this is because the parameter count for the pokes and the SYS call to replace the pokes are the same, and BASIC will take the same amount of time to parse either case. These changes put the pokes for the X coordinates on par with the pokes for the Y coordinates, so that they'll take the same amount of time to execute. So you might see an increased speed of 1.15 to maybe 1.3 times over the previous version of the program when the sprite moves horizontally or diagonally. Every little bit helps. The nice thing about the machine language code I've created is that it simplifies the plotting of sprites for your basic programs. No more slow calculations to worry about. 
Of course, when you're working with basic, the usual trick is to move your sprites more than a single pixel at a time. So let's make that sprite move four pixels at a time instead of just one pixel at a time. And we'll do that by going through our program and changing all these to four. And press enter or return or whatever over each line. And let's run it. Whoa, how do you do? Okay, now this is reasonably smooth for our sprite movement in a basic program. So moving four pixels at a time is a good call. Yeah, is a good call here. Um, okay, so now, well, let's play around with it a little bit. Yeah, okay, you're probably like, oh, come on, man, move past. Now there is, uh, I would have to also change the uh, border, um, the border values here to uh, keep it from going a little too far, but uh, we need to move on. So you can do that if you want. I am choosing to move on. I'm just here to teach. So, and uh, okay, let's just get rid of that again. Okay, so now we're going to load up a very simple game that I created for this video. And I mean very simple. I pulled some sprite shapes from an old game I made many, 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 many years ago. And I put them in there, so I have aptly named it Simple Game. I'm not going to go into exactly how this game works line by line. I just want to point out an old tip I've used in a lot of my older games, and the tip is this. If you can design your game not to use that far right of the screen, over here, you won't have to worry about that extra significant bit that needs to be poked into location 53264. And that provides a speed benefit. Also, in this game, the car never moves up and down, so the sprite's Y register never needs to be changed during the gameplay. I whipped this game up pretty quickly, so there are no sound effects. I apologize. Let's just call this game Kamikaze Drunk Drivers Who Want to Get in My Way. Actually, one of my pet peeves is when drivers drive slow in the fast lane and just drive behind, beside someone else doing about the same speed for miles and miles and miles, uh, never letting anybody pass. We all know them. I have a word for those kind of people, but I'd have to believe it. So anyhow, let's run the program, shall we? And a character set is being copied and altered. Okay. Um, these cars were designed for a game where the um, other cars can never change lanes. So, and I'm trying to drive and do this at the same time. Um, let me see if I can pause. I'm gonna, well, I'm going to just crash. How about this? Okay. <laughs> I can't talk and, and play at the same time. I'm sorry. These cars were designed for a game where the other cars never change lanes. So you can see through some of the windows and such to the ground below. Um, you'll notice, you may notice this when I, uh, when I activate it again. I am using the extended color mode of the C64 to help create the illusion of movement for the dashes running down the center of the left and right sides. I am claiming that the drivers are drunk partly because many of them are clearly driving on the wrong side of the road, but the wrong side is pretty dependent on the country you live in, of course. And um, going back to the extended color mode for a minute, the neat thing about this mode is that you can change the background color of an entire subset of characters within with a single poke. So the white you see on screen is actually the background color of two character subsets. I'll provide the game on the disk image so that you can see how I pulled this off. With extended color mode, you can only redefine 64 of the characters, so you are pretty limited in that regard. But I think it's a cool mode to work with. So, I just want to explain a little bit further here. Um, like, 
This character here would be uh, one ex part of one extended uh, character set mode, or one of the one of the uh, subsets. And this one here is part of another subset. And then this would be a character from another subset. So, and it just runs down the screen. So, they repeat. Okay. So, um, anyhow, the uh, motion effect here only requires two pokes per game loop. So it isn't a huge drain on game speed. Again, the point of showing you this game is that you can create games in BASIC where you don't have to poke that extra bit into location 5 through 264. And uh, we'll just uh, play this a little bit more. So you can just, I don't know. It uh, gets faster as we go along, but um, pretty slowly. I guess I could. Uh, have it increase in speed a little quicker, but anyhow, this is I think this is pretty impressive for basic. We're not even using any machine language here, so um, you know I'm just showing it's just I'm just showing you tips and explaining tips and uh, I don't know I say to you know if you're really into pushing the limits of basic, just regular basic, go for it, see what you can accomplish. Uh, but anyways, um, I'm done. Let's crash. Okay, and I'll get out of this thing. Okay, so uh, let's uh, keep this video short and move onward. My final set of tips are for Vision Basic, so let's head on over to Vision Basicville. It's a town I'm very familiar with. You may have seen me use a couple of these tips before, so I'm just going to be quick with this. Every basic command has some overhead to it, so if speed is super crucial, here are a couple things to try. You can access the sprite registers at the speed of pure machine language with this kind of statement. Equals x and let equals y. Now this doesn't handle that extra significant bit um, for the X coordinate, so you can use the mob XY command in this fashion. And X and just skip out on the Y there and type let equals Y. Yeah, you're not seeing anything here because we haven't turned on a sprite or defined a sprite or anything like that. I'm just showing you how to format it. Anyhow, and this uh, this will at least help a little bit there with the speed. I use this technique in my ball bounce video, by the way. The point is, is these two here um, will be converted to machine language, and then this here, uh, you know, it'll fetch the x coordinate and there's some overhead to that but then there won't be any overhead for the y coordinate so this uh, here is for the y coordinate and this will be converted to pure machine language and so you get a little bit of a boost and finally if you have all eight sprites in use and want to skip the overhead altogether just use the routine I created for the following program which I'll load here shortly and I'll put this program on the disk image as well Well, dad blast it. We're going to have to attach the disc. Hold on a minute. All right. It's attached. And you didn't have to witness it. I did it. And then cut it out. Okay. Oh, wait. Now we got to load it first. Sorry. Do, 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 do. Load it. Okay. List 12997 onward. Okay. And this is the um, this is just a part of the larger program, but this is the routine that you would copy and use. And I've isolated it and put it on uh, the disk image as well. And I've also uh, changed the line numbers for the uh, the separate file, <laughs> the part I extracted. Okay, so all you need to do to use this routine is just plug in your own variables here. 
um, the X coordinates and the Y coordinates and uh, they don't have to be XO and YO they could be whatever like you could have car X here and car Y or, or whatever um, they could be different lengths they don't you know you don't have to keep these variables just switch them out with whatever you want ignore all this even though you should be able to recognize that they're sprite um, position registers and the uh, the most significant bit portion is handled down here so again if you don't know machine language or I mean well you should understand this part but um, this is machine language down here and you don't need to I mean just copy the routine use it plug in your values it's as simple and this is for Vision Basic of course this routine is fast enough where you can use it even if you are only using say five sprites and not all eight if you are only using five sprites you could delete lines 13060 to 13080 and then make the front wing so we could just type them in I'm not gonna actually you know you just type them in they'll be deleted um, they're not necessary so you just use um, just use these top five lines here plug in your X and Y coordinates and then down here uh, for the last three since we're not going to if you don't want to use them you just uh, erase this part here and that should work and uh, you can also get rid of the colons and just leave the uh, leave this stuff intact I mean you could do that delete the lines delete the delete what you see right here and then your five sprites are you know you can just go with five sprites and it'll make the routine a little faster but uh, you don't really need to delete the lines and make changes it will still run very fast regardless so uh, it's up to you delete lines if you want delete this stuff if you want or do nothing you can just um, you know you can just have some variables here and just keep them and they can be just garbage variables it doesn't matter uh, as long as the sprites as long as the values of zero you're not going to see any sprites on the screen and as I have stated before it's best to run this routine off screen if possible so that your sprites don't blink or shear so I'm going to list list 470 and in this line you can see that I'm using the pause command by itself and then calling the all sprites routine and the all sprites routine is this routine here keep in mind that the pause only works correctly in this fashion when you have enough game activity going on I would suggest only putting it in to help stabilize game speed after you have a decent amount of game code created you saw this program being run at the beginning of the video so I'll run it again and say my goodbyes now. And we'll, well, I'll say my goodbyes as soon as the passes are over. Okay. As usual, I thank you all for watching my video. Please like and share my video. And definitely subscribe for more similar content. And make sure to visit visionbasic.net.